Hey, Peace family, it's Jay Morrison in the building for a, another live stream. Um, I'm just on the grind and um, have been really encouraged lately, wanting to just give back, give inspiration, give motivation. This particular live stream, we are titling the marathon versus the sprint. Um, I plan on talking about this a little more during our corner class in Los Angeles, May 31st, right, at Lamert Park on Crenshaw. Um, we'll be doing another free corner class, empowering the community, talking about family legacy and wealth building. If you guys missed yesterday's live stream, uh, go to my Facebook fan page at Mr. J. Morrison and go watch yesterday's live stream. I think it was awesome content for you. So I wanna encourage everyone to get filled and get fed and keep that energy um, around you. But I was thinking last week, and this is kind of how I want to start it. And we're live on multiple channels. I mean, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Instagram. So you'll see my eye line kind of shifting to the different devices and cameras and phones we have capturing this. But I was thinking last week um, about our dear brother, the late, great Nipsey Hussle, rest in power. And especially as we're approaching the LA corner class. And, you know, before Nipsey's passing, we talked about um, us collaborating, linking up, and I had plans for him to be a part of our LA corner class. Um, obviously, in the physical, we can't execute those plans, but hopefully, in the sp uh, not hopefully, I know in the spiritual, he will be there. Um, many of you saw our Houston's corner, our Houston corner class, where we had rapper, entrepreneur, real estate developer Slim Thug was there, and that was really cool because it always was part of my plans to collaborate with different people in pop culture. Uh, who I respect, Slim Thug being one of them. But one of the things that we know that Nipsey Hussle talked about was the marathon. And as I started reflecting on the marathon, as I'm day-to-day -day living out as an entrepreneur and as a, a CEO, as a fund manager, as a developer, um, as a uh, you know private money lender, if you will, um, as a speaker, author, mentor, I was thinking about the lie in the marathon. And not the lie in the marathon in general, but the lie in, for me, and for some of us who say that we're running a marathon, who talk about business being a marathon, entrepreneurship being a marathon, but who really live a sprint. And that's why I titled this the marathon versus the sprint. I've realized in, in, in yesterday's live stream, again, I encourage you guys to go to yesterday's live stream um, to watch it. I talked about emotional intelligence and self-realization. And so I constantly live in a state of self-realization, right? And at, in my self-realization, I was, um, being honest with myself, which is all what self-realization is about and emotional intelligence, I was being honest with myself and saying, Jay, you do not live a marathon. You actually live very aggressive. You're actually sprinting towards legacy, sprinting towards building wealth, sprinting towards success, and you get very frustrated when you do not meet your end goal and your finish line. And then sometimes you get burnt out, Jay. I'm talking to myself in a third person. You get burnt out, Jay, when you do not hit your goals, um, when you don't hit them fast enough, you get burnt out from exerting so much energy so fast. And I, I literally have been operating business running in these short distances, but trying to cover a lot of ground. And so I want all of you to self-reflect today. And I'm just, just use me as a sounding board, as a virtual mentor. Some of you are my students and my protégés. Um, you know, leverage me, leverage me, leverage my gifts, my experiences, leverage these moments that I share with you all and, and do some self-reflecting for yourself and really question yourself because most of us don't do it. We say that the marathon continues. We say that we live a marathon. We say that, you know, we know we need endurance and persistence and consistency and resilience and all these cool words. But how many of us can literally hold our head high hold our shoulders back and chest out? How many of us can smile and have peace of mind and, and, and peace at our heart when we are not reaching our goals and we're trying, we're attempting, we are working our butts off, we are focused, we are being disciplined, we are being sacrificed, 
we are persisting, but we're not reaching our goals year after year after year after year, can you not stress out? Can you still approach life with your chest out, as, as Nip said? So what I'm saying in that is my self-reflection was I've always, and I told this to my, my wife, Ernestine Morrison, and, and my daughter this weekend. I had a, you know, I'm always trying to be transparent and really candid. I was like, you know, in the last several years that I've been involved in social empowerment, economic empowerment, and, 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 and advocating for my community, I've honestly been sprinting because I've always feared the repercussions of empowering the black community. Um, in most cases, in many cases anyway, where a black man or African man in America has taken a stance to empower and elevate his community and mobilize people, organize people, and do it effectively, um, there have been, uh, you know, catastrophic consequences to that, right? And so I've realized in being, again, transparent and being um, self-aware, that in my businesses, in my social empowerment, just in my life, even in my book, The Solution, I wrote this in two days, right? I was talking to T.I. yesterday, Tip, and his beautiful Rafe, by the way, it's beautiful. Um, and I told him about The Solution, and, and we gotta get him an autographed copy. He loves the contents. I told him about it, I didn't, I didn't have a book on hand. But I wrote this book in two days. This book was a blueprint that I wrote for how Africans in America achieve unity, justice, and repair. It was my blueprint to how I feel like we repair our community, have unity in our community as, as, as black people or Africans in America, and how we get justice, right? And I told them, tip this, and I told my daughter and my wife this, I was saying that I wrote this book in two days, and it's, it, it's well, I mean, I think it's well written, it's, it's a bestseller, but I rushed it out because I feared the consequence of my empowerment work and I wanted to leave behind some kind of blueprint in case something happened to me. I'm just being honest. In case some accidental something or some intentional something or some uh, character assassination something or whatever it may hopefully never be, I wanted to get out a blueprint of what my contention was, my strategy, my philosophy, my ideology, my antidote was for my community, right? So I got that out. Then behind me, you see part of a sign, Tulsa Real Estate Fund, the first black owned real estate fund in the history of the country, which I wanna remind you all, June 1st is our anniversary. It's our one year anniversary of this historic company. On May 31st in Los Angeles, on Crenshaw at Lamert Park, we will be doing our corner class, hosting our corner class, which will be based on education for family wealth, legacy through real estate, business, and credit, the RBCs that we teach in the J. Morrison Academy. But I wanna use that platform on May 31st to give a special announcement, an anniversary announcement of and for the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. So I wanna encourage all our TREF Life, TREF member supporters, or those who to support the movement and brand in general, of our comprehensive economic empowerment that we, we, we do here, um, please live stream, tune in. If you're in LA or surrounding areas, come to the event, fly in, whatever you gotta do. But it's gonna be a really cool presentation announcement live on a street corner, teaching hundreds of people. But I wanna um, pay homage to, if you will, um, or salute all of our Tulsa Real Estate Fund partners and I wanna give an announcement update during our one year anniversary, which also marks the one year anniversary of the Black Wall Street bombing and massacre in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where hundreds were murdered, thousands imprisoned, and over 2,000 homes and businesses destroyed in one day in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1921, which is why our fund is named Tulsa Real Estate Fund in homage of that community. So I wanna make this message uh, to serve as a notice of the anniversary announcement on May 31st in, in Tulsa. For those who aren't familiar with the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, please learn more about our organization, uh, our fund, this historic company at TulsaRealEstateFund.com. Join our email list, it costs you nothing. Uh, and in that, 
you'll get communications from us about events, about the next round of uh, capital we'll be raising, about uh, opportunities and, and deals that we have done and invested in. Our real estate uh, assets are a model of lending back to the urban community and other cool things. Uh, you'll see all the info on our site. We are, again, the first black-owned real estate crowdfund in the history of the country. You can, um, we have over 9,400 investment partners and um, we are doing something that has not been done in our community in, in, in over 100 years. So anyway, um, outside that announcement, what I, what I have realized though is through Tulsa, the Jay Morrison Academy, another organization under our management and that I run, um, we've educated nearly 100,000 students um, and you know, we've made Inc. 5000, uh, number 588 fastest growing companies, number 13 fastest growing educational companies, and just some really cool things. But even in those business models, I've realized I've been sprinting, man. Like just keeping it real with you. Um, because early in my career, I was sprinting because the first 10 years of my entrepreneurial life, which is ages 15 to 25, I was a street entrepreneur particularly in the field of street pharmacy. And during that tenure, I rushed because in the streets you're taught that, you know, you're gonna have the inevitable results, which happened to me, I didn't die, but I did go to prison, that you're gonna be dead or in jail. That in the streets, any given day, something can happen to you. So you live life fast, you blow money fast because you wanna experience life before something happens in the street. So then at 25, I turned my life around, got into mortgages, got into real estate development, investing, et cetera, being a, a realtor, uh, inevitably a celebrity realtor who worked for one of the largest real estate companies in the, co in the world, and uh, you know, real estate expert for uh, platforms like the NBC's Today Show, et cetera. So I did all these things in my lifetime, but I've realized, and this is again, I, I'm just, whoever could benefit from this, benefit. If it don't mean nothing to you, you know, I don't know, log off. <laughs> But I've realized that during the course of my journey, I have not really taken a deep breath, kept an even pace, and run the marathon. Jay Morrison has been running a sprint because of, because of the high-risk environment that I've been in in social activism or in the streets or, you know, et cetera. I've always felt like there was some quick end or some quick demise looming. And so I've not been able to be as methodical and as marathon-like as I would like to be. And so with that self-realization, I've accepted uh, a new demeanor and a new posture of running a marathon. And, and honestly, listening to King Nip, Nipsey Hussle's music and really studying his posture and watching his journey into rap, into entrepreneurship, into real estate, et cetera, and even my private talks with him and text messages and FaceTimes, I saw, and that's what, what really gave me the epiphany, and I wanna share this a little more elaborately on, in LA on May 31st, 6 p.m. at Lamert Park. We're gonna teach our free corner class. But I saw with King Nip that he didn't get caught up in the Joneses because his last name wasn't Jones. He was not trying to beat a clock in entrepreneurship. He was not trying to, he was running his race, not knowing that at age 33, he would in a physical leave us, but he was running his race and he was making strategic long-term decisions. He was even doing it the long and hard route. He could have took advances from record labels. He could have taken shortcuts, but he believed in ownership and control and he took the long route. And I've done that in my own right. There's been opportunities where I could have worked with other larger organizations. I could have partnered with different nonprofits. I could have partnered with different real estate organizations. I could have stayed a, a real estate agent or a real estate consultant with major real estate firms in corporate America. And until I guess to my own degree, I did take some long routes and some marathon routes of building up my own brand, my own entities, my own investment vehicles, institutions, our own school, right? So I did do those things, 
Um, but I still feel like there's more of the marathon mentality that I could embrace. And I think it's more of the mar marathon mentality that many of us can embrace. And so as you're going through your journey of, you know, creating family wealth and legacy, we talked about it yesterday. Again, I want to implore everyone to watch yesterday's live stream. Um, and please share this. Whoever's watching from Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, share this content. If it, you know, if it's impactful to you, it might plant a seed to be impactful to someone else. So don't be selfish, be selfless and share this. But I just want to implore you guys, um, you know, we believe in the anchor to building family wealth, wealth being an abundance of assets that supersede your liabilities. We believe that anchor is through the RBCs of real estate, business, and credit. Because through real estate, we have ownership, power, control, cash flow, residual income, passive income, tax advantages, equity, appreciation, leverage opportunities through real estate. And real estate is one of the easiest business models to execute, honestly, in my opinion, for anyone in the world, especially here in America. Um, we believe that even in real estate, you are an entrepreneur, and we don't believe in real estate hustles or really being a real estate crumb snatcher. We believe in having a real estate business. And so we teach entrepreneurship the right way, understanding how to build out your organization, formalize your business, legitimize your business, build your team, your staff, be the expert at hiring experts, um, building a strong corporate veil, uh, onboarding and, and recruiting and vetting your team the right way, having the right process, procedures, personnel, protocols, controls, all these words that might be kind of foreign to you. We teach that in our school um, and we believe in the power of the credit ecosystem, right? The credit and capital ecosystem, uh, which is personal credit, family credit, and business credit, and the power of leveraging that credit, which can be repaired, restored, recycled, um, and rebuilt. Uh, we believe in, in all that coming together to give everyone a fundamental foundation for building family wealth and leaving a legacy, excuse me, building intergenerational family wealth. And we got to start using that word more because generational wealth means one generation. Intergenerational wealth means multiple generations. And so we want to be clear because there's power in words, which is why I say king and king and queen. I write about it in my book. I, I say king and queen to intentionally elevate people, particularly to intentionally innovate people of African descent because we've been socially degraded and, and in many terms self self degraded or, or practicing self degradation where we call ourselves degrading names and make it cool and fun. So I don't do that. I, I'll break that cycle. I was taught by Malcolm X that that's an ailment in our community. And so um, in honor and honoring his legacy, I like to practice a diagnosis to that ailment, which is self elevation as opposed to self degradation. So we believe that's the easiest model and we believe that RBC's real estate business and credit is the cornerstone to building intergenerational family wealth. And through that literacy of, of the RBC's, it's this universal language of wealth, we then get into stocks and finances and Forexes and life insurances and tax strategies and other pillars of wealth. There's multiple, in my opinion, there's seven pillars of wealth, um, which we'll discuss in another live but the RBCs, I believe, are the cornerstone to those pillars. Uh, so for those, anyway, we are making sure that you guys are aware of a launch of our new curriculum, the RBC curriculum and certification program. And I just want to invite you all to check that out, read up more on it, and see if you want to become a member of our RBC curriculum certification program and become literate in the cornerstone of wealth, of intergenerational wealth, the RBCs. Um, you can learn more about the RBCs at jmorrisonacademy.com, right? Just go to jmorrisonacademy.com to learn more about the RBCs, joining our program, becoming certified. Uh, our program goes live June 7th. Uh, but if you enroll or pre-enroll in that program, it's an online curriculum. You get 24-7 access to an exclusive curriculum with weekly mentorship calls, exclusive student community, a certification in real estate entrepreneurship, real certification in business, certification in credit mastery you can obtain through this program. You learn at your own pace. It's all online learning. 
Um, again, the weekly mentorship calls and other bonuses and perks you can read about on the website to that program. But for those who pre-enroll before June 7th, you will get a bonus 65 plus lessons on real estate, business and credit. And we also cover wholesaling real estate, which I know many of you are super excited about how to be a middleman or middlewoman in a transaction and make money through real estate with no money down deals. We teach multiple no money down deal strategies, syndication strategies, commercial real estate strategies. And really, again, just how to position ourselves to be the best CEOs for our last names and then lead our family as CEOs and be the visionary for our family as CEOs to a path of intergenerational wealth, whether it happens in our lifetime or we prepare our heirs to make it happen in their lifetime or the future generations of our last name. So that's what we're all about here at JMA. Tulsa Real Estate Fund um, is another vehicle where... Many of you will be able to invest in soon and become partners with us. Uh, right now, you don't have that opportunity until we open up our fund again uh, for investment. But you do have an opportunity to go to TulsaRealEstateFund.com and to submit any real estate opportunities that need capital partnerships, that need financing or funding. We do fund construction deals, gap funding, mezzanine, uh, purchases, rehabs of residential, commercial properties, et cetera. Go to TulsaRealEstateFund.com to submit your opportunity for capital partnership and funding if you have a funding or capital partnership need, right? These are all economic solutions that I've created during my sprint um, that I hope to create into a legacy that is rooted in now a marathon. I know what my, I want my end goal to be, and God willing, I'll be an old man um, looking back at these uh, moments and saying, what the hell were you rushing for? You know, God had a long-term plan and vision for you. Um, and so I still am going to be aggressive and assertive and hopefully effective. But um, in the marathon versus the sprint, it's more than words. You actually have to live a life that says, hey, in business, my, my first year in business, even in real estate, I mean, my first nine months, I made $2,500 in nine months. And I was ready to quit in nine months because of that. And then I ended up making 30000 on my ninth or 10th month. Um, saying that to say, don't live, don't preach the words of marathon, practice the practice of marathon running, right? Just don't talk about being in the marathon. Understand that in entrepreneurship, it takes time to develop a business. It takes time to develop a multi-million dollar real estate fund. Um, I'm realizing that, right? And I think our partners are realizing that, that we are, as, as long as you are, in some cases, you may not even, one, we like to progress. We like to not even be stagnant, honestly. Most of us are not even happy with being stagnant, and we definitely don't like to digress, right? But as long as you're in the race, you may not be in first place during the marathon. Your fourth lap, you might be in last place, but you forgot there's a hundred laps. So while the other guys are burning out or just doing what they're doing or while you're catching your rhythm, you might be in last place in the marathon on one of those laps. It's not about the process or where you start. It is all about, the marathon is all about where you finish. And let's take our brother, King Nip, for example. Unfortunately, he finished at 33 years old, his physical life here on earth. But even in him running his race as impressively as he did, because most people didn't give him the props that he deserved while he was here on earth. He didn't have an outpouring of support like he did once he passed. But when he hit his finish line, he finished, I mean, legendarily. I mean, he finished... Like, I've never seen in my lifetime someone finish the race. And that's what it's about. It's about living a life that is full of consistent effort. Consistent effort. It's not about being in first place the entire race. The marathon is not about being in first place the entire race. The marathon is about living a life that is consistent and resilient and persistent so when the whistle blows, when the, when, the, when, the, when the clock strikes, when it's your time, when you've reached your finish line, 
you can be your version of first place and have lived the best life and planted the most seeds and contributed the most towards your last name and your legacy and prepare your heirs as best as you can in that race. And so I just want to leave you guys with those words. Um, again, the RBC program launches June 7th. Pre-enrollment is now. 65 bonus lessons if you enroll. There are tuition payment plan options on our website. Go learn more, jmorrisonacademy.com. If you're interested in credit services, business funding services, mind you, you can get business funding with a 680 credit score. If you're lower than a 680, we have credit services to help get you there. I'm talking about on a new LLC, an old LLC, an existing S Corp, whatever it is, contact us about business services or one-on-one -on -one mentorship opportunities or consultations. You guys can go to our website, jmorrisonacademy.com. You can inquire more there or call our 800 number. It's on the website. It's big and bold. I'll give it to you now. 1-844-JOIN-JMA. I have advisors that are happy to talk to you about where your financial journey, your legacy journey begins. You can call 1-844-JOIN-JMA. And that's all part of my legacy play is how can I put the most people who are economically ambitious in position? Some of you guys are unfortunately at this time in your life, um, I don't even have a word for it, but you are economically passive. Meaning these things sound good to you, but you are not ambitious enough to take action, right? You, you hear me, you follow all the experts and gurus, right? All of them. You follow all the guys and gals who offer all the great information, but you're not eco economically ambitious enough to then go pursue and get involved in what it is you say that you're attracted to. Um, for me, ever since I was 15, 16 years old, I went and I sought after the plug. Whoever had the information, whoever had the product, whoever had the... Whoever had the resources I know could advance me and my family, I was always economically ambitious enough to make no excuse about directly going to handle my business. I never let any other, anything, Tulsa Real Estate Fund. I know what my ambition was, which was to create an economic vehicle for my community that did not exist at the time and to provide a way for us to pull our dollars together and to be able to restore and invest in and participate in group economics. And I just went for it. That's it. When I got into real estate in 2005 at 25 years old, everyone said, you can't do real estate with felonies. It's a three-time felon. I went, said, the hell what y'all talking about? I got a mortgage license. I got a real estate license. I bought several properties, understood financing. I never let I never put up a wall or a blocker or I never allowed a barrier entry to stop me. I was too economically ambitious. I had, my end game had to be met. There's just no excuse. There's just, there's, just, there's no, there's no, accepting, I don't accept anything less than what it is I came for. And so I want you guys to hopefully adopt that same kind of economic ambition is that you gotta get what you came for. Like nothing, all the other stuff, everything you say, but does not even, but my credit, but my money, but I don't, shut up. Like go figure it out. It's not that you can't, it's how can I? Oh, Jay, I want to get involved in this, but I can't afford. No, how can you afford? Does that mean you got to pick up a second job? Or are you willing to work at Burger King to go afford the extra income you need to get to where you got to go? Will you take a part-time job making 70 bucks a week? 100 bucks a week, 130 bucks a week. Will you go Uber? Will you go, right? Will you go sell your J's? It's not that you can't, it's that you have not committed to doing so. You're not, you haven't committed to your can. Commit to your can. During your marathon, stop your can'ts. And com that, cause think about it, you run a marathon, I'm talking about seven mile races. At some point you wanna quit. You wanna go grab your knees, bend over and gas some air, but you can't. That's what you can't do. You can't quit. You got to keep telling myself, I can. I can get to the finish line. It's hard. It's hard. I was making, I made $2,500 in nine months. I was borrowing money from my mom, driving a 93 Mercury Grand Marquis with a, a rag top and driver's side door handle missing. 
I want to tell myself, I can't. I got to quit this industry. I can't afford to feed myself. I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. But you, but you can. You just got to commit to your can. And so with that, um, just wanted to leave you guys some love on this Wednesday, man. I'll be back live um, tomorrow, hopefully, if I get time. But that's my goal is to go live every day, like 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, again, jmorrisacademy.com, 1-844-JOIN-JMA. Learn more about Tulsa Real Estate Fund, tulsarealestatefund.com. Corner class in L.A. this Friday, May 31st. Big Tulsa Real Estate Fund anniversary announcement, our one year of this historic fund. Um, then after L.A. will be in New Orleans and St. Louis. Just want to invite you guys out to come build with us, man. Love you all. Share this message. Keep building. Action beats ambition. And commit to your can on your marathon. R.I.P. King Nip. All right, guys. Love you. Peace. Thank you.